I don't even need a hook for this video because we're talking about animated explosions in After Effects which are, by their very nature, freaking awesome. And we're gonna learn how to make the most stylish explosion. But on top of that, I'm gonna show you a secret technique that'll make your explosions hit even harder than One Punch Man. So to start, we've got this pre-comp circle burst. And if we go inside the composition, you'll see that it's been cropped a bit larger than the circle itself. And this first step in our animation is something I picked up from Ben Marriott, but we're gonna do things a little different and play around with a few ways to make our explosion as epic as possible. The first thing we're gonna do is hit Y to change to our anchor point tool. And then we're gonna snap our anchor point to the bottom by clicking and holding Ctrl or Command on Mac. Then we're gonna drop in scale keyframes one second apart, come to our first keyframe and change it to zero. We're going to easy ease our keyframes with F9, go into our graph editor and making sure we're using our value graph, we're going to adjust our graph like this, making it really extreme because we want our circle to scale up very fast initially and then slowly scale into our final frame. Now we're going to duplicate our circle and change the color to black. This is going to act like a kind of matte for our circle, so the first thing we're going to do is select our new scale keyframes, go back into our graph editor, make sure we are one frame ahead and move the left handle down to reveal our bottom circle. Now this animation is totally fine, but if we open up our internal transform properties, unlink the internal scale, change the X scale to 160 and move the layer down ever so slightly, we get something which looks way more awesome and organic. Now we just need to change the Y scale to 105 to cover the top. Now we're going to move our first keyframe one frame forward and our second keyframe about two frames forward and we're good to go. So let's go back into the previous composition and it looks a bit weird because of the black circle, but we don't need to worry about that for now. We can simply turn off our BG layer to hide this. For starters, let's move our anchor point to the bottom of our layer, snapping it into place like we did before. Now to add some more style to this, we're going to add a warp effect and change it to arch, which just makes the whole shape a bit more angular. We can now animate the bend by dropping a keyframe at the start, change it to zero, and then go to the end of our animation at one second and change it to 50. Let's also open up our scale properties by hitting S, unlink it, and change the X scale to 80. We now have something that is much less circular and a bit more interesting. All we need to do now is duplicate this layer a bunch more times and start adjusting some of their individual properties like rotation and scale until we get more of an explosion like shape and we have some nice variation between each one. We also might want to change the position of some of the shapes as well as the overall location of our layers. And now we have a cool little explosion happening already. Now you may think that we're done at this point, but to stop now would be to waste the magic of the setup, which is the fun we can have inside of these pre-comps. So let's jump back into the pre-comp. And for starters, I want the shape to start breaking up as it moves. So let's make a triangle shape like this that starts at the base of the circle and make sure that its color is set to black. Let's snap our anchor point to the bottom by holding control or command on Mac. Let's name it cutout. And then coming about four frames in, we can animate the X scale from zero to 100 at the point that the circle disappears and you should start to see what we're going for here. Now we're going to rotate it a bit, duplicate it and rotate that as well until we have something interesting like this. Next, let's drop in a ruler to mark the base of our animation by hitting Ctrl or Command R and dragging a line from our top ruler. Now using our pen tool, let's create a line from the base to the top of the puff like this. We're going to remove the fill, change the stroke color to this pink and make the stroke width 40. We can also change the anchor point to the bottom, name it trail and twirling down down to stroke and taper stroke, let's increase the start length to 100%. Now we need to add a trim pass and moving to the point where we want the trail to disappear, let's drop in an end keyframe. Move to the start and change it to zero. Now let's easy ease and in our graph editor, let's change our easing to something similar to our circle. Now we want to drop in a start keyframe, move ahead and change it to 100, then move the first start keyframe in about two frames and give it an easy ease. And this is what we get. Let's also duplicate this, rotate it and make a adjustments so that it's different from our original. Once we're happy, we can also trim the layers so that they disappear at the end. And we can do this with the keyboard shortcut, Alt and right bracket. These are all of course optional extras and you can design them based on your own preferences, but I wanna show you some of the possibilities. So with that in mind, let's do one last thing. Let's drop in an oval at this point in the animation, make sure that it's just a pink fill, rotate it, call it little puff. Let's also drop in position and scale keyframes, move to about 10 frames in, change the position and make the scale zero. Let's quickly easy ease the first scale keyframe and trim the layer with alt and 
left bracket. And this is what we get. Now back in our main comp, we need to start thinking about the final look of this animation because it's a bit too consistent and jagged. But for starters, let's create some variation in each segment. So let's right click on a comp and click on reveal layer source in project. Now we can just duplicate this twice and I'm going to speed through this next part. But the idea is to go into each one of these comps and adjust the cutouts, trails and little puffs to create three different variations. So this could be adding or deleting our extra objects as needed. We also want to make sure we adjust the timing of the circle animations and make any other necessary adjustments. Once our variations are complete, we simply need to select the new circle burst pre-comp in our projects panel, click on the comps we want to replace and then hit control alt forward slash to replace them and repeat as necessary. Now we have some nice variation and we can get to our final styling. So let's pre-comp our circle burst comps, name it explosion pre and turn our BG layer back on. The first thing we need to do is remove the black from our explosion comp. So let's add the effect extract and drag in the paths on the left to remove the black. Now we can add the classic fast box blur, set it to five, add a levels, change it to alpha and crank in the handles like this. Now a quick rough and edges where we remove the fractal influence and set the border to five cleans up the edges. And just look at that sexy explosion that has an almost hand drawn feel to it. And if this tutorial has been helpful so far, explode that like button to let me know. And I bet you thought this explosion couldn't get any better than this, but I'm telling you right now, it totally can because we're going to add a few quick things that'll separate the Gokus from the Vegetas. And this brings us to the sponsor of this video, AE Juice and their I Want It All bundle. This bundle contains an absolutely massive amount of assets. And talking about animated explosions, this pack contains a wide range of awesome explosions that you can drop into your composition with a single click. So while we've been out here training at 100 times gravity, AE Juice is the fusion we need to 100x our power level. But in this case, we're going to use their pack to augment our current animation and make it even more epic and dynamic. So let's create an anticipation for this explosion as if it were drawing power before it hits. So let's go to our AE Juice pack manager in the liquid elements tab and we're going to come down to explosion 64. Let's double click on it and if this is the first time using it, it will quickly download and then appear in our composition. Let's solo this layer so that you can see the animation. Now what we're going to do is right click and go time reverse layer and drag the layer back until we see the animation start. We're also going to add a fill effect to match our colors. And just an FYI, if you don't have the pack, AE Juice offers a free starter pack and you could create a similar anticipation using two duplicates of Explosion 2 and repeating the same steps. However, we're going to move forward with the one we had as I think it looks just a bit more dope. Now we're going to move our explosion layer to three frames after and now to transition, we need to add a circle shape layer like this. Let's call it transition, drag it under our comp, trim it on each side and add a scale keyframe at the end. Now let's move back a frame and scale it down and then let's scale it down a bit more on the first keyframe. And we may want to keyframe the path at this point to cover this gap like this. And since we have this pack, we can also go into our explosion pre-comp, go to fire flames, drop in fire flames 103, trim it to this point, change its color with the fill effect, drag it to the center of the composition and rotate it into place. This just adds a bit more visual interest. Once again, if you don't have this pack, you could simply animate a couple shapes here instead or use something from the free starter pack. Now to make our explosion feel even more frame by frame, we can add an adjustment layer, add a posterized time effect, change it to 12 and trim it to this point so it is only affecting our second explosion and have a look at that. But remember that secret technique I mentioned? We can make our explosion even better using impact frames. But what are they? Impact frames are a type of frame you sometimes see in hand-drawn animation and most often in anime. And here are some examples. And what you'll see is that they're generally black and white and only last about one or two frames. And you may have already seen these before without even realizing it because they happen so fast that often you feel their impact instead of actually processing them visually. And the impact they create is massive. So let's use them to make our explosions hit harder than Goku after reaching Super Saiyan God. For starters, let's drop in a solid, call it impact frame, add a fractal noise, set the contrast to 4000, twirl down transform, uncheck uniform scaling and scale the width to 60 and the height to 5000. Now let's add the polar coordinates effect, 
change rec to polar and set the interpolation to 100%. Now we can scale up our solid to cover the frame, drag it below our layers, drop in a keyframe for brightness, move a frame ahead and increase the brightness to about 300 and now we just need to trim it to 2 frames in length. Now we can add an extract effect again to remove the black and then the same blur and levels trick from before so that our styles start to match. Now we just need to add a new black solid to place underneath our impact frame that is trimmed to the same length. Lastly, let's add a full effect to our explosion pre, add a keyframe to the start and change it to a hold keyframe by hitting Ctrl, Alt and clicking on it. Now at the start of the impact frame, change this to black and then copy and paste the initial color frame to the point which our impact frame disappears. Now let's just copy and paste this to our transition layer. Depending on our explosion, we may need to make some minor timing adjustments so that our impact frames hit at the right point. The final steps I took were pre-comping the impact frame layers and adding a bit of color and chromatic aberration. I also added some AE juice electricity to our anticipation. And here is our glorious explosion and can you feel that impact? I hope this tutorial has helped you take your explosions to the next level. And if you'd like to take the fastest route to stylish explosions and more, check out the I want it all bundle from AE juice, link below.